strategy that we're gonna talk about today is from your database. Now, you know I talk about database a lot, database, SOI, sphere of influence, like whatever you wanna call that group of people who you want to rely on for repeat business and referrals, that's where we're gonna hone in on first. Regardless of whether you're a brand new agent or you've been in the business for 10, 20 years, this is something that you cannot sleep on because at the end of the day, we want to see about 15 to 20% conversion a well-seasoned database, yes, should deliver you about 15 to 20% conversion. Meaning for every 100 people that you have in your database, you wanna see 15 to 20 deals per year just from that lead source alone. This is why this is one of the very first things that we work on with agents, again, regardless of how new they are or regardless of how many people they know, to help get them started in real estate in the Market Authority Academy when we are working with newer agents. A really good example of this is Pualani. Polani came to the Market Authority Academy as a new agent last year, and it was really important to her that she managed her business in a way that felt authentic and genuine to her, using the right systems and just not doing any of the salesy, spammy stuff. She was able to close 15 deals from her database and from referrals last year in her first year while she was also taking care of some very important family commitments on the other side as well. So this just goes to show, even if you're a new agent, especially if you're a seasoned agent, we need to be focusing on the database first. Now, do not get it twisted. I'm not another coach coming at you saying, call your SOI, like that's not at all what we're looking to do. But what we do need to do is have a lead generation plan that's going to allow you to be connecting with your database each month. Now there are about 101,000 different ways to interact with your database that can and should generate referrals and repeat business. But just as a couple of really concrete ideas, there are a few things that you can do starting now with little to no startup. For your past clients, if they have already purchased a home anytime in the last, let's say three, four years, you should be connecting with them on at least minimum an annual basis to check in and see how they are doing, right? And and for us, this looks like a homeowner consultation. This is not a new idea in real estate. There's a lot of other schools of thoughts that kind of incorporate this sort of concept. But realistically, a homeowner consultation is an opportunity to connect one-on-one -on -one with your past clients, kind of learn a little bit about how they've been doing, right? How's the year going? Do you have any big goals coming up? And then talking about their what is likely their most pricey investment, their home. So you want to kind of take an approach of this is what the market is doing, this is how much equity you likely have in your home in today's home values. You might want to learn a little bit about what repairs they've done on the home and see if you can assist in connecting them with any vetted professionals for those. And you can also help just provide some feedback or insights on ways that they can continue to build an equity into their home by making some smart and strategic upgrades. For example, if your client is coming to you and they're saying, you know, everything's been going great in our home. At this point, we just really want a pool in our backyard and we think we're gonna go ahead and do it. It's gonna cost us 75K to install a pool, but we should get that back, right? That's your opportunity to say, Actually, probably not. And from here, you can explain the benefits of making a huge upgrade like that, but what the ROI might be on the sell side. Again, this is just a consultative-like approach to helping them understand how to manage this investment because while we are not like finance people, this is still an investment that we've helped facilitate. So we should be able to provide just some insights just with our knowledge in the industry. These conversations almost always result in a referral or even talks about planning to sell in the near future. And so do not sleep on this opportunity. This is something that you really wanna try out. Other ways to generate leads are client events and even just having conversations or meeting one-on-one -on -one with people who are likely to refer you. Again, you don't have to do anything crazy, salesy, spammy, but just remember that real estate was built on real people and real relationships. And the more you are loving on your database, just like Pualani did, the more you will see a return from those efforts. The first thing that I'm doing is I am opening up my workspace to begin my prospecting for my attraction-based business is focusing on hot leads. Now, side note, if you need some more hot leads in your business, hit the like button. We could all use a little bit more hot leads in our business, right? <laughs> so we'll send some of those to you. Anyways, you wanna start with your hot leads, the newest, most exciting opportunities that you might have. So this might look like new leads that are coming in through your website and inquiring, new booked strategy calls that you're getting from social media, new referrals coming into your inbox or in your text. This is basically when you are getting those new leads kind of figured out, okay? 
You're going to be trying to set appointments with them, setting up follow-up, getting a disposition, that sort of thing. Now you might only have like one or two or none on a given day. So once you're done with your hot lead management, you're then going to go into your daily call lists immediately thereafter. For me, this looks like my ABC database calls and anybody else who I had on my list to call that day. Now, again, I'm going to mostly focus on high opportunity calls here. So um, current leads, current clients, people who are referring me, that sort of thing. This is also then going to lead into any follow-up that I have as well. So if I have leads that I have some long-term nurture or follow-up that are kind of on my list and my CRM to reach out to that day, that's what I'm going to get those done as well. So that first like 60 minutes of time is really all about making sure you're taking care of new people coming into the business and then making sure to move everybody else who you've already touched base with down that pipeline until they get closer to the closing table. Then what I'm doing is getting into social media work. Now in an attraction based business, a lot of what you're doing on social media, as long as you're not like mindlessly scrolling for hours is going to be considered prospecting if you're doing it right. So what I'm doing on social media is beginning with my engagement on social media because on social media, I am trying to nurture my database relationships and meet new people to ultimately bring into my database. That engagement is really important and it's something that I'm doing every single day as a part of my prospecting routine. Ultimately, this looks like engaging with people in my feed, engaging with people in the stories and really just trying to start conversations. And if I can start like five to 10 conversations on Instagram, for example, in one sitting, then I know that I'm going to be doing the right amount of engagement that should ultimately lead to me booking one new appointment a week for a prospective client. Once I'm done with my engagements, if I did have a post that I wanted to make on social media, that is the time that I'm going to do it. So again, to recap, we're doing hot leads and contact management first and then our social media engagement. And then with any time we have left over, we're going to make our social media posts for that day. So I'm only posting maybe one to three times a week on Instagram at this point. That is when I'm doing it right after that first 60, 60 minutes of time or so of my prospecting in the morning. If you're having a conversation with one of your ideal clients and you get the objection. Here's what we're gonna do. The first thing you're gonna do, the first thing out of your mouth is to affirm and acknowledge. We have to remember that buying and selling a home is an intensely emotional process for people. This is not something they do often and Ultimately, this is going to rock their world for a couple of months if they choose to go through with this. We have to be conscientious of that fact. So the first thing you're going to do is affirm and acknowledge that this is a valid concern of theirs. This way you can immediately start building trust. If the first word out of your mouth is, no, that's not true, you've just alienated them without even realizing it because you did not take a moment to acknowledge their feelings in this highly emotional process. You might say things like, that totally makes sense. If I was in your shoes, I would be feeling the exact same thing. I hear you. Those headlines are super scary and I've heard them too, right? Like you just want to take a moment to acknowledge what they're hearing and affirm that it's a valid feeling. The second thing you're going to do is dig deeper. Tell me more about that. Tell me why that's really concerning you. If that is true, if that does happen, what does that mean? for you guys. Why is that something that you're concerned about at this moment when it comes to buying or selling? You want to dig deeper because this is the concept of the question behind the question. The first objection they give you is kind of just like, well, this is scary. But what we need to get to is the because it can cause harm to me in these ways. We need to figure out specifically what they're afraid of happening. Now, again, in future videos, I'll give specific context and, and things to look out for with real examples but you, you might already kind of get a sense for what it is we're doing here. We're trying to get to the root of the problem, like the real objection that, that is holding them back from making a decision confidently. Only then, after you have gone through step one of affirming and acknowledging, and step two, dug deeper to find the true, true problem, then can you educate and help them get past this objection. If you do not take those first two steps, you are not going to lead them to a place of confidence and clarity. For example, Let's just do a really, really, really quick high level example. The objection is I'm not sure I should buy right now because there is so much uncertainty in the economy. I might respond to that and say, oh, I hear you. I know there's a lot of concerning stuff on the news headlines and on social media. What exactly are you hearing about that? And what exactly I'm digging deeper here. Are you most concerned about with the economy? 
their response might be something along the lines of, well, you know, if we're headed towards a recession, what if the housing market crashes and I lose all my equity right after I purchase a home? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we can actually figure out what it is they're truly concerned about. Now, most agents, they hear that first thing where they say, oh, I'm, I'm concerned about the market. And they either back off completely, okay, I don't wanna be salesy spammy, or they immediately dismiss those concerns by saying, ah, the social me media headlines, they don't know what they're talking about. You just need to buy a home because renting sucks, right? Like, like, do you see the difference of these approaches? That's what we're trying to accomplish here. After you educate the true challenge that they have, the true objection behind the objection, then you can offer expectations and create a plan with them. But that's gonna be our four steps. You're going to affirm and acknowledge. You're gonna dig deeper. Then, only then are you going to educate them through that objection. And finally, you can put them on a plan to actually get back on track to buy or sell, whether it's right now or whether they truly should wait for some time if through that conversation you guys decide that's what's best for them.